lock you in the... The best, craziest direction I get is when I do video games with Chris Zimmerman. She's a, she's a video game director, and she likes to really describe the way that you're dying. So, so she's, it's not just like you're taking a hit or you're, you're making a punch or whatever. She's like, you're being eviscerated. Or like, she uses like crazy versions, and I'm like, wait, what does that mean again? You know, so you have to check with her. And why would I know what that sounds yeah. like? Well, I mean, so just so my eyeball is getting sucked out of my head? Okay, okay, I'll make that sound. <laughs> she gets very specific. Um, one direction I got when I worked on World of Warcraft Cataclysm was, uh, I was working with Andrea Toyas, who I love so much. Uh, she gave me a direction of my character dying. and okay, your character's gonna die in a very, very descriptive way. They're gonna fall to their knees. It's like, okay, you're getting us down, they're gonna fall to their knees, and then they're gonna, like, just fall flat on their face, and I want you to do, like, this really death, deathly kind of howl. I'm like, I'll remember all that, I'll try to. So, the way she said it, I'm butchering what she said, but it was almost like a story. It was interesting. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, this is for um, What's the most, most embarrassing that thing that's happened to you at a convention for your career? Getting fired. Oh. Yeah. But it's a badge of honor. You haven't really worked in this town, so you've gotten fired, and by this town, I mean the entertainment business. Yeah. One of them, I, it wasn't really embarrassing, it was more shocking, but when I was at Anime Expo, I hope he's not here. <laughs> Some, a, a guy in my, in my autograph line told me to face my head to the left. I thought, okay, he's gonna, you know, he's like, alright, face your, face your head to the left, and then we're gonna take this picture. And then, um, on the count of three, his cameraman had counted down from, from three to one, and on the count of one, the guy turned his head and tried to kiss me. <laughs> and, um, so that was pretty bad, and that's, you know, that never happened, so I was pretty shocked. That's, that's a, I had an experience today where, uh, I just like, just thought of this. Um, so I mash in League of Legends. Ooh. <laughs> 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 but, you know, there's this whole, whatever, Ash. So someone came up with a poster today, and, uh, I might even be here, but, uh, he, I thought he was asking me to sign his ass. <laughs> because it just kind of, it, I just heard it that way. It's like, will you, will you sign my ass? And I'm like, I'm sorry. Or what? <laughs> it was ash. We don't know each other that well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would totally do it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> um, I got a weird request at, um, I hope he's not here either. This is scary. Um, I got a weird request at an autograph signing, and um, it, it was for Karma from League of Legends, and then a person asked me, I love you, Karma Boys. Could you like marry my life and then at the end say I love you and I want to marry you and I want to have all your babies? And I'm like, I'll just sign your book. <laughs> That's really awkward. If somebody like requested that I, um, like you know, like the people ask you to like record a voicemail or something, but they wanted mine to be like, you know, like me pretending to get in bed with them and all this stuff. <laughs> what? Dirty, dirty, dirty people. Dirty. Welcome. Here's a fan service question. Okay, um, if you could pick any be shown in this not from the anime free to be trained for swimming, diving, and bodybuilding, who would you pick? To be trained for it? Yeah. that you would pick to, to be trained for swimming, diving, and bodybuilding. So a cute guy? A cat? Yeah. Does it have to be anime? Can it be like, can it be stars, comic books? Anime, please. Aww. Aww. I'm going to have to refrain from answering this question. I don't have sad or ignorant. Oh, okay, whoever you want. Huh. It's not brain surgery. Benedict Cumberbatch. Joseph Gordon Levin. Oh, yeah. Yuri Lowenthal. I second Yuri Lowenthal. <laughs> he never does. Well, thanks. You're welcome.
well be. <laughs> you were here for the earlier panel, I take it. <laughs> I think mine's a given if you play or know anything about The Walking Dead. It's just 
probably, I mean, I won't speak of season two or whatever, spoilers, but the, both the endings of season one and season two were just extremely emotional, which as an actor, I think we can all agree, when you're given that content to work with, it's like, it's just so cool. A lot of times we're, you know, up here and happy and, you know, whatever. And this was like really cool to, to, uh, to go to those dark depths. Um, and I wouldn't say I was like nervous to go there, but it was definitely an intense experience, more so than most sessions I've ever had. No, I, I agree. When you're doing the more emotional, like you know, like when you're when you've been playing a character for a while in a series, and you've really gotten familiar with that character, and then that character goes through an experience that that character has to deal with if they're dying, if their friends are dying, if whatever's going on in the particular series, it can get quite emotional. So you know, when you do those sessions, you're like, whoa. You know, it's not necessarily that you're nervous approaching a session, it's just if you're excited to get to, to figure it out and make it happen. But it's, it's also work. I mean, like, that's, that's the fun of it, the juicy part is, you know, like getting all up there in the emotional world. But I will say that uh, when I did my session for uh, DC vs. MK and I was doing Wonder Woman, Ooh. they had, they had uh, a team of, like, 30 guys on the phone from DC approving every line that I said. So I would say like, Batman, this is Wonder Woman. And then they would all go down the line. <laughs> well, I would sit there and they would critique, like, I didn't think the ah sounded like it. And I would just have to be like, okay, okay. And like, take it in. And it was really nerve wracking because I wanted to please them. I mean, it's such an iconic character. You want to do the best work that you possibly can, but it's also like, okay, I mean, I did what I thought was right. You know, like, so there's a, there's a balance between trying to please the directors and producers of the team, and also trying to bring your own stuff that you bring to a role. And so that can get a little nerve-wracking if you have a team of people approving or disapproving of what you're doing, especially when they're behind the glass and you're, you're like, I hear you. <laughs> Is it okay? Like they push the silent, yeah, and all their faces look all screwed up. Right. You're like, oh my god, I am sucking so bad right now, they hate me. And actually what they're really doing is ordering like, lunch. Ordering <laughs> lunch. I don't want pepperoni pizza. I hate it. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, One of the most recent challenges I've had is I was cast to voice the lead character in a show called Violetta. It's a, it's a Disney show. And what they needed was 81 hour episodes done um, within less than a year. And um, I was pretty nervous that I wouldn't be available or that we wouldn't get it done. Um, but when we got through that, it was great, and they gave us 80 more episodes, so. Uh, my was gonna say that. My recent challenge with the show I just worked on, uh, I played a boy in that, and I usually play the little sexy, the little sexy chicks, the sexy chicks, and it was my second time playing a boy in a show, and it was really challenging because I had the director and the producer come in, so I was like, they're approving every line, and they had me do five, six takes, and I'm like, oh, I'm doing this right. And then I kind of just fell into the character, and I kind of just lost myself. And at the end of the session, I'm like, you did great! And I'm like, oh, we're done. So that was, that was an interesting process. And for me, it was probably when I got cast as Monica from Monica Magica. Me and Christina had a lot of scenes together. They were very, very emotional. If you guys have ever watched the show, it goes into a very, very dark place. And before that, I had only done like comedy things and light stuff. So being able to delve into like the like despair and emotion that they go through was a really growing experience for me. And it's probably been I've learned the most from that show in terms of acting. So. Thank you, ladies. And thank you. Thanks, big great question. Thank you. Thank you. journey to inform you. So I don't know if there's a particular line, but I think that we all, as actors, learn from our characters, and our characters do teach all of us. But I wouldn't be able to 
put my finger on exactly this line or this particular phrase is what changed me. But you know, every time you come in contact with a new person, whether that's a created character person or an individual in a room, there's an experience and exchange that happens and that does have an effect on you. Away to the whole series thing. What's the uh, creepiest thing a fan has ever like asked or wanted you to do? Someone once said they were going to cut me and they thought I'd be filled with sugar because I was so sweet. Um, I, was oh. Oh. I had someone on Twitter just recently say they wanted to murder me. That's pretty creepy. Love those trolls. Yeah. I had pics of guys' private parts sent to my Facebook. <laughs>
just give us like a plot and then like a plot twist and spoiler at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> so, I didn't actually hear that last one. No. It thinks that the, the demons are actually no good in the end as he gets older and he becomes friends with them, right? Oh. oh. Yeah. It's, it's sort of like Batman, right? <laughs> strong female characters and strong male characters and weaker female characters and weak male, male characters so you can have a little more quality. But there are going to be series where it's all going to be a bunch of chicks kicking butt and that's great but that's not going to necessarily be equal to a bunch, you know, so if you just want to try to pick and choose the titles because much like with anything in life, you know, there's going to be some that are going to forward your cause and some that are not going to, so. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
Yeah, there, there's, I'm gonna have to follow suit on that. There's a few trolls that if they were like kind of like say it to my face, and then I kick them in their balls. Yeah. Love their girl, and then I kick them in their balls. <laughs>
before stepping out and trying to show that to everybody else. Um, so really just be strong and know who you are and that will help you with um, all the hard parts like being recast or not getting a role that you really wanted and facing rejection every day and I think that's just important for any job really. Um, mm -hmm. and, and much like what she's saying about knowing who you are, also you know, protect yourself because there are creepers everywhere whether it's on the internet or in business. So just, you know, don't do anything that's not a smart thing to do. Don't show up to someone's apartment for an audition on a Friday night. Yeah. No, just yeah. take care of yourself. Follow your instincts. Tell your instincts be smart. Tell your friends when you're going someplace. Like, yeah. have a friend go with you. No, just take care of yourself. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you're you. Thank you. Um, my question is, since majority is your background is also theater. Do you remember any passages from any of the plays that you've been in? And if not, do you remember? Do you have any memorable moments that have been in the theater? That what? I'm sorry. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> because apparently this makes a little. There's, a, there's kind of an echo. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do you have any memorable? Do you know any passages from any of the plays that you've been in? And if not. Do you have any memorable moments that happened in the theater? It's the song I love the melody of 42nd Street. Sorry, musical theater background. Yeah. Don't <laughs> I'm trying to remember, I used to be able to rattle off the Juliet speech for a long time. The Galico Pace, he's very from his deeds, was famous lodging, but I don't, I wouldn't be able to like call that. I'd have to look at it real quick and be able to do it. But uh, getting to play Juliet, um, you know, to a 3,000 seat house is pretty amazing. I did a show about Chavez Ravine, which is where Dodger Stadium now is, and there was a community of people who used to live there before they were kicked out by eminent domain, and uh, I played a grandmother in that show, and we had a last scene where she's warding off the police with a shotgun, and it was amazing. <laughs> I don't have any. The only play I've ever been in was in middle school, and I played Anne Frank's mom. And all I remember was I cut cake for everyone, and we ate it on stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, your version of Diary Man Frank sounds so much more fun. <laughs> 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 from my sister Daniela up there. Hi. Yes, I doubt that you have this type of power, but by any oh, chance God. in your spare time, not only will you make me happy, you'll make all these people happy, and you'll save a company from going out of business, but by any chance in your free time, can you speak with your boss, the president of Skullgirls, if he can make the game I've been dreaming about for years? Capcom Ladies versus Skullgirls. You know what? I'd like to see that happen. Capcom versus Skullgirls? No, Capcom ladies versus Skullgirls. You want like Tron Bond and all those ladies? Yeah, like all the Capcom females beating up the Skullgirl females. <laughs> yes, right, 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 <laughs> yeah, you can. You will make us Have you seen my list of credits? <laughs> I don't think I have a line. Okay. Or has there been, yeah, have uh, scripts you picked up and went no, or or even shows that, I don't know, sometimes it's, there's, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of TNA. Yeah. Well, and then there's this line where, like, there's pedophilia aspects to some things, and I go, oh, this kind of, other times they're really great. That it's just more girl power, blah blah blah. But 
Yeah. Well, a lot of different studios, when they call you in for an audition, if they're going to have you do something that's a little more risque, they will let you know before you audition. And then when you go in, you can say, okay, I know you said risque, but are we just talking like booby shirts or what are we talking about? And then they'll, they'll let you know exactly what you're looking at. And at that point, you say, you know what, I don't really feel comfortable auditioning for this. Or you rarely get to the point where they're offering you a role, and then you're trying to decide. Usually it's much more the, you know, are you interested in coming in to read for this kind of, of a position for people? And then everyone makes their own decision as to whether they feel comfortable, or if they feel uncomfortable, then they usually pass on it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I've ever had that as much as things that are more ethical for me, like a major corporation that I might not agree with at all. You're like, all right, is it worth even taking money for that? Because I despise this these, this company. Um, I haven't ever, I haven't, I haven't had the chance for a risque thing. I heard something that I'd be like, oh, wow, that's risque. Well, like people were coming up for, uh, I just did a video game called Drafting Guard 3, and I play uh, the lead character Zero in that. And it's just, it's, it's a little risque. It's like there's a lot of killing, but there's also a lot of sex. And so, you know, like there's there's things you're saying, and it's not it's not awful, but it's, you know, they just wanted us to know before we took the role, before we came in an audition. They were like, we just want you to know. And we were like, how risque is risque? Like, what are you talking about? Are we talking tentacle porn, or are we talking about <laughs> <laughs> So you just, have, you, know, you just have to decide for yourself what you're comfortable with. It's the same as acting on camera or any other thing that you'd be doing. You have to know who you are and what you're comfortable with. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been asked to do shots in film where they wanted me to take off my clothing and I said absolutely not and I turned down roles before because because they want me to do a shower scene or something like that. So that no, I don't want that out there. Uh, but as for like anime video games, there are like no bars for me. I would do anything. <laughs> I wouldn't go as far as hentai, but... <laughs> I was in the same boat with anime and video, game, video games. Nothing really shocks me anymore unless it's hentai's no go for me. But most anime video games, I'm like, I'm, I can't be offended by anything. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. It's a little, little weirder for me because I play a lot of like little girls, like 12 year olds. So I don't get that that often. Thankfully, yeah. you don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There, there's some, and then there are some though that you know might be some crazy national spot. And a part of you is like, I have to read for this because we have to make a living. And but I tell myself, if I do book this, I will donate, you know, some money to an organization that does the exact opposite of this horribleness. Um, but there might be there. I would definitely there would probably be a few. Uh, just to name ones, I don't care. If Monsanto needed a spokesperson, I sure as hell wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> or a good one. Uh, what's the most curious or nasty thing you ever? What was the question again? Mm. Oh, eating. Uh, Hold the mic. You can pull it out. Yes. Like, exactly. Um, what's the most curious or nasty thing you ever eaten? I have eaten a red ant omelet mm. in Thailand, and they didn't tell me what it was until I ate halfway through it. Mm. And I noticed there were eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did street food in Bangkok too, and it was like cockroaches. Yeah, and there's and stuff. outside the temples, they would yeah. like just roast cockroaches. Yeah, yeah they're very oily. They're yeah. really oily. Like they pop in your mouth, and you're like, oh, I actually should have one. Yeah, they're, they're very poppy. Wow. Uh, for me, um, I was at a buffet with my family. I graduated from high school, and my um, uncle and everyone, they, they flew in from a uh, in town, and I'm like, we're gonna go and chill out at the buffet, we're gonna eat everything. And I said, like, okay, cool. So I go to this one area, and it looks like there's chicken nuggets, and I'm like, there's so many chicken nuggets here, let me just get like 10, 20 of them. It's my graduation. So I sit down, and I'm eating these, what I thought were chicken McNuggets, and my uncle's like, you thought the chicken McNuggets weren't, didn't you? I'm like, yeah. He's like, no, those are catfish balls. And I'm like, <laughs> I grew up too because like, I was 
so young, this is why I didn't like fish. I love fish now. Before I was like, okay, I, I just threw up. Let me go to the bathroom real quick. That was embarrassing. <laughs> I'm drinking toilet water. Oh. I'm not even gonna try to explain. <laughs> 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 I'm racking my brain right now. I definitely can't top that. Oh. Um, I opened a box of macaroni and cheese when I was a kid and had maggots in it, but I didn't eat it. Oh. So good choice. It's a choice. Good choice. <laughs> From having eaten that, I'm going to tell you you didn't need to eat one. Yeah. You did not need to eat one. <laughs> you already told oh, I have. I have eaten a maggot, yes. <laughs> no toilet water, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You win. But I, I, I did that. Oh. Out of shame. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Is the question similar to the question about using to do a script or any certain thing? Um, as voice actors, have you guys ever felt really, really bad just doing a certain character? Because like, if I were to play a video game where I had freedom of choice, and I would pick a choice, and it would cause really negative things for people around you. Have you guys ever felt that guilt? Um, I mean, I kind of, I mean, I don't think my character in The Walking Dead is evil. Obviously, she's not evil in any way. She's great. But she's, there's definitely some choices that she has to make that are, that feel pretty horrible. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the game. But it's, uh, I wouldn't, I don't know if that's the closest thing I can come up with on that front. Like, really powerful afterwards, you feel, like, emotional. Yeah. Kind of sits with you for yes, a while. Yeah, like, yeah. For a few days, it happened to me a few times. Yeah. The whole day, I just thought, about, oh man, I, I did something bad. Right. And just because you're trying to merge yourself into that video games, or anime, or even TV yeah. show, your favorite character, that was something that you're like, oh, I never thought you would do. Right. The Aletta show, it's not really something that like sat with me that I like mulled over, but my character is one of the mean girls and she likes to scheme against Violetta. And at one point she even, they even went as far as to poison her, or they found out she had an allergic reaction to strawberries, so they planted it in her drink. <laughs> and then it turned out that somebody else, it was somebody else, and they drank it, and then they began to have an anaphylactic shock. And I ran, and my character just runs away. It's like, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. <laughs> but yeah, I guess like. Uh, well, for me, as, as a kid, I grew up and I was bullied and everything, and I did a show called Gargantia on the Murderous Planet. Um, I don't want to give anything away because it's a spoiler for the OVA, but I play a character who in the show is pretty much like a religious fanatic, and she loves whale squids, so she'll worship them. Or worship, that's like a god. Squids? Squids, like big whale squids. <laughs> and there's faces underneath their tentacles, and it's weird. Um, so in the OVA, she has a sister, like a younger sister, and she's bullying her to the point of actually trying to murder her. And I'm like, I was thinking while I was recording, like, that's like, my sister and I are so close, I was thinking, she's gonna murder her sister, it's like, that's not cool, and she's bullying her? Didn't fly right. Um, I, I also, I'm also in Dragon Garden. Um, with Tara, and my character wants to destroy the world, and I didn't feel bad playing her, but I was a little sad that, you know, she didn't get to that point because Tara stabbed me through the heart with a gigantic sword, so I, I did. Die. I do that. I do that. <laughs> but you're so mad. I know. <laughs> Actually, I love playing the bad characters. Because I, I feel like in life I'm a nice person, and I try to be a nice person and conduct myself in a good way. So it's actually a lot of fun to get to play an imaginary character that does terrible, terrible, terrible things. <laughs> <laughs> like stabs your sister in the heart. Huh? You know. Okay, thanks. I also, I had fake guard of mine also. <laughs> <laughs> thanks again. Uh -huh. Thank, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Five minutes. Awesome. Anyone else? I think we got through all the questions. Did you guys want to talk about anything that's going on for you guys? Uh, Kelly Kel is now pre-order for Volume Two, the Blu-rays. It's like really special edition. There's postcards and cool stuff. And Malcolm's on the cover this time. So that's really exciting. And it comes out October 21st. Yeah, that's that. Um, uh, Gargantua and Brothers Planet, the DVD, Blu-ray set for the show, and the OVAs are coming out. October 7th. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Bloodlands is going to be on DVD soon. Um, I'm in Final Fantasy Type 0. There's not a release date yet, but it should be announced soon. And uh, Sailor Moon is coming out in November. Woo! Um, season 2 of The Walking
Walking Dead. Also, uh, Telltale did Fables, The Wolf Among Us, which is another awesome game that I'm also on, so I highly recommend checking that out. And The Space Racers, which is an animated series on PBS. Check that out as well. Um, I think there's some more Skylander stuff coming out, which will be fun for everyone. And then uh, The Thing That Never Dies, League of Legends, which many of us have got to, to continue on with, which is fun because there's more stuff that I've been recording than that, which will be exciting. And there's some stuff we can talk about, but you know, fun, 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 fun. It will be good. It will be good. But uh, the movie that I told Gary and I told you guys about is called Con Artists, and uh, we're really close to, to getting a distribution deal in order, and then we'll let everyone know. We'll put it up on our social media and Facebook, Twitter, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to let everyone know how you can watch it. It's probably be VOD, and it's all about conventions and voice actors going to conventions, but it's in a very Christopher Guest sort of uh, waiting for Guffman style. But we actually shot at 11 different conventions over the course of the year, and so it's very fun and very silly, and there's actually going to be a lot of cosplayers in it, and so that'll be coming out later this year. So it's going to be fun. Yes. But thank you guys so much. Woo! Okay, everyone, chill. Sorry, Freeze, but it's time to heat things up. Be cool, Batman! <laughs> That's not cool! That's not cool! Sorry, Freeze. You know I can't be ice, because I'm Batman.